everyone. I'm Redian Perizoli. I'm excited to share some of my PhD work uh, at the Research Centre for Biomedical Engineering from the City University of London. So I've been working on developing an in vitro model to investigate cardiovascular disease, specifically using PPG or photoplasmography sensors. So here's a quick overview, overview of what I've been talking about. I'll start with cardiovascular disease, why we're interested, why it's a big issue. Then the technology, photoplasmography, how does it work? Why that's our technology of choice? And then I'll go into our method of building the system, how we make vessels, um, and how we put them into phantoms, and then some initial results. So starting with cardi cardiovascular disease, CBD, or commonly simply known as heart disease, which is an umbrella term for conditions affecting the heart and blood vessels. So it can lead to different diseases depending on which area of the body or which vessels are affected. Like we've got some examples here. If we hope to detect cardiovascular disease, it's important that we understand the causes. So we're particularly interested in arterial stiffness, which is also linked to aging. Other causes are atherosclerosis and hypertension. So in the UK, according to the British Heart Foundation, CBD accounts for nearly a third of all deaths. And if a baby is born with a problem, it's most likely to be CBD. Even, as I mentioned, with the vascular aging, uh, it's also linked to aging, making CBD an issue across all ages that we're hoping to tackle. But of course, this is an international conference. So looking at it on a global scale, the World Health Organization reported nearly 18 million deaths, making it, again, the lead leading cause of death, not just in the UK, but across the world. Uh, the number one killer in the majority of countries. So being such a big issue, I know you're thinking that there's already some technology out there. So of course we have imaging techniques and electrocardiography to see the electro electrical activity of the heart. So these techniques are very powerful and they do have their place. Usually by the time a patient is booked in for an MRI scan or CT, that means they're already in the later stages of uh, vascular disease. Some of these techniques, for example, CT can involve x-rays or injections with um, angiography. And Doppler ultrasound is a non-invasive portable technique which requires um, an ultrasound technician present. So we see that there's a potential, especially with the rise of wearables with non-invasive monitoring where PPG can really uh, be expanded upon. So currently it's being used to measure heart rate and blood oxygenation in um, wearables. Our aim here is to unravel the PPG technology and see how much more can we detect, can we detect cardiovascular diseases using this, this optical method, which I'll talk about now. So photoplasmography, as I mentioned, it's a light-based technique. It simply consists of a Put a light source like an LED and a detector, making it completely non invasive and is able to detect the, the volumetric changes in blood. So, by shining light into an area, for example, the finger, the ear, you will detect the re reflected light back. And with each uh, beat of the heart, it sends a pulse wave uh, expansion and contraction. So, when the blood vessel expands at that point, the amount of light dis, uh, absorbed is going to change. So that absorbed light is detected by the photodetector or potentiometer, and that changes uh, corresponding to the heartbeat to produce a signal like this. So this is our PPG signal, and this is where we hope to analyze and extract features to link it to cardiovascular diseases, such as um, vessel stiffness. So I'll talk about some previous research. Uh, John Allen from Coventry and his team have done bilateral in vivo PPG studies. So this was bilateral by taking PPGs on both sides of the body, left and right, at different locations, like the ears, fingers, and toes. And they did this on patients as well as healthy subjects. So you'll see here that the good news is that the body is symmetrical in terms of PPG anyways. So the right and the left are more or less the same, uh, the red and the blue. Interestingly here, um, the, the ear and the finger are very similar, but then when it comes to the toe, there's a clear difference in the PPG. 
And that's because this patient had peripheral arterial disease, specifically leading to the lower body, so the uh, lower leg vessels. So this was promising. It shows that there is, um, there is an opportunity for PPG to detect cardiovascular disease. It clearly shows up in the signal, especially if you zoom in, you can again see at the uh, ears and fingers, it's the same, very similar waveform. Whereas here at the toe, there's a clear difference. So this is the kind of analysis we hope to do. Uh, how are we doing this here at City? We're building a model. So the idea is that by creating a cardiovascular model, we can interrogate in a controlled environment where we adjust parameters such as vessel stiffness and see how does that affect the PPG wave, where we can focus on, um, uh, focus on interrogating just that specific area without external factors. For example, with a, with a patient, they might have other conditions or they might be taking medication. So in this case, we're, only control, we're controlling one thing at a time. This is an overview of a system, just a block diagram. So we start with the pump, which represents the heart. We're able to control the stroke volume and the heart rate to control the uh, flow rate around the system. So this pump doesn't have a reservoir, so we need to add a reservoir to introduce fluid into the system. In this case, it's a simple blood mimicking fluid. And then as you can see, it leads on to our vascular network, starting from the aorta and then going on to the lower body, in this case, which is the femoral tip and tibial arteries, where then it splits into the uh, bifurcation. So this is our bilateral system where we've created two branches. So we can replicate these kind of studies, initially hoping to obtain similar PPG signals in both, both branches, and then introduce a disease or pathology into one branch and um, monitor the PPG. And then it comes back around, and here we have the return flow branch, so we can control the pressure into, into the um, network. Okay, so just to, here is the phantoms, and now I'll go into how do we make the vessels, because for the network, we tend to use uh, commercial tubing, whereas for our phantoms where we specifically analyze the PPGs and like I said, control the pro properties, that's where we will ma make our own vessels, um, where we can customize the properties such as the thickness, and we can also create more human-like um, vessels than what you can buy. So this is how we do it. <laughs> this is a zip coater. So basically the job of this device is simply just to go up and down with this arm. So how do we make vessels with that? Well, we have here at the bottom a silicon pot where we put in our silicon mixture. Then we use a form, in this case, just a commercial tubing that we can dip through the silicon pot and it slowly, gradually rises up going through a heating element. So as it rises after being dipped in the silicon pot, it will uh, have a coating. So another silicon coating around this tube. Eventually, with a heating element and with time, it will cure. And then we're able to remove the internal tubing and we're left with just that silicon coating that was surrounding the, ves uh, surrounding the tubing. And that coating will become our new vessel, which will show much more human-like elasticity than traditional rubber tubing. And we can also customize the properties by adjusting the silicon mixture, depending on how what uh, additives we add, we can change the stiffness. We can also adjust the timing and the heating to change the vessel thickness. So that's how we make the vessel and customize it. And then we also need to put it, put it into a phantom. So for this, we use more silicon, this time into a mold. So you put the vessel through there, add the silicon around and allow it to cure. And then we'll have something like this. So the goal was to create two identical phantoms with, with the same vessel and same tissue mixture and attach it to the system. And this is what it looks like in practice. So this is the final product. Uh, with the pump, the reservoir, and then our phantom. Okay, so that's how we make the how we built the system. The initial finding was more of a validation study, just to see can we uh, obtain uh, human-like PPGs from both sides, and are they similar? So these are examples of the infrared signals. So we successfully managed to obtain human-like PPG with a dichotic notch, as well. And clearly they look visually, sim uh, visually similar. So that was good news. To further 
confirm this, we did feature extraction, as I mentioned. So we started with very simple, um, well-known features, looking at the amplitude, the gradients of the upslope and downslope, and the time taken for the peak to rise and fall. And then we did a statistical analysis to quantify these signals. And more or less, uh, most of them were the same. Um, I saw upslope can have a bit of a variation between branches. So the idea here was to have two normal healthy branches. And this is and this is uh, what we shared in the paper, which was more about how we built the system and the potential for cardiovascular disease investigation. So future work would involve, as I mentioned, customizing the vessel, introducing a disease, and also then analyzing the PPG in more features and also the first and second derivatives, which we've seen in the literature hold a lot of potential uh, of information. Um, since then, we have also done some uh, some further experiments, which I'm excited to share. So this is just a sneak peek where we created one vessel that was with uh, changing the mixture. We created it, we made it more stiff to stimulate arterial stiffness, and we could clearly see the difference in the PPGs. So we're excited to analyze this further, extract the features, and see can we quantify arterial stiffness and detect cardiovascular disease and screen early on cardiovascular diseases. Um, that's my talk, thank you.